Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and we are a minimalist family who is living big with less. And today we're talking about minimalism, baby. So if you are expecting a precious bundle of joy or someone you know is, I'm gonna tell you some of my top tips for having a minimalist baby so you can spend more time cuddling and less time cleaning. So guys, if you are new here, we have five children and so I have had many babies and toddlers and minimalism saved my behind when I was really struggling with lots of little ones. And so today I'm gonna to be sharing some tips and tricks that worked for me, but let me preface that by saying, I am a firm believer that a stress-free mom and dad equals a stress-free baby. So you do whatever you need to do to stay stress-free. If you can buy something that is going to help you, absolutely do that. But let me show you some things that I found really helpful in getting rid of the things that are unnecessary so I can focus on the things that do help me. Number one is to focus on the three things that every baby will need. So your baby will need something to wear, especially on its behind. So whether that is disposable nappies or reusable, just have a think through what you'd like that to look like. Of course, down the line, that might change. And having some clothes that are age specific that you can switch through really quickly as your baby grows, they are crucial. So once you've got that, it doesn't have to be a full wardrobe, let me tell you, some babies skip an entire size. Sometimes the seasons change faster than you think. So you can really pare that down and then add items as you need them. But something to bring that baby home and to get you through the first couple of weeks is essential. The next thing your baby's gonna need is somewhere to sleep. So whether that's a bassinet or a co-sleeper or a cot, whatever you decide, as long as you thought out what that's gonna look like for you, if they've got a place to sleep, that's the most important. And the the third thing they're going to need is food. So whatever you decide, if you're going to breastfeed, if you're going to bottle feed, just making sure that you have the supplies you need for that. I did breastfeed my babies, but I also, with my first baby, I made sure that I had some bottles and things, supplies for expressing and some formula just in case I needed it. None of my babies ever did, but I did feel better just knowing I had some on hand. But whatever that looks like for you, just thinking about what that process is gonna look like and making sure you have the right supplies and doing whatever is right for you if I know anything about having babies, it is that everybody has an opinion. So please just feel free to do whatever is right for you. My second tip is to consider some baby shower alternatives. So if you are going to have a baby shower and you are worried about getting too many items given to you, you can ask people to buy off a list. You can have a consumables only baby shower. So that's where people bring things like maybe nappies or baby food, baby wipes. Uh, bath products, things that you can use. So all of those things are gonna be used up and then out of your house rather than you know a lots of toys or things that you may or may not need. Another option, which is one of my personal favorites, is a food baby shower where people can come and bring you meals that go in your freezer ready for when your baby comes. This is so helpful and even if this is not how you have your baby shower, having a group of friends or a community group that can bring you some meals when you have that baby, I think is worth its weight in gold. My third tip for you is to wait and see. So there are so many products out on the market that are particularly for babies that are for a specific reason and that reason only. The thing is not every baby needs everything on the market. So for example, you can buy a wipes warmer. Here in Australia, it doesn't get that cold. If you have a baby in the middle of summer, a wipes warmer is not going to be necessary. 
But if you live in a colder climate and this is something you're worried about, you might just want to wait and see how things go. If you're finding that you need it, you can always purchase one after that bubba's here. This is such a good thing to remember, particularly for clothes. Like I said before, sometimes your baby grows quicker than you expect. Sometimes they skip a size entirely. Sometimes the seasons don't quite match up the way you thought. Winter lasts longer. If you're here in Australia, summer comes way before we think it will. And so sometimes if you have lots of winter clothes, when you need summer clothes, they just go unused. So if that's the case for you, I would suggest keeping like four or five outfits that you think you might need and then adding as you go, depending on what the season and size of your baby is. Number five, and I know this is a little controversial, but for me, I honestly had never had any problems and that is to buy secondhand. Buying secondhand baby clothes is, I think, a three-way win. One, you can either buy it from a great community organization where the funds are going back into a community, or you can help another mum out by buying some of the clothes she no longer needs. And also, our clothes are, are treated with a lot of chemicals when they come out of the manufacturers. And so clothes that have been washed have actually had a lot of those chemicals stripped out. You can, of course, wash them when you get them home, but it's really great three-way win and you're saving yourself money. So if you are considering buying secondhand baby clothes, I highly recommend it. Now with other baby items, there are obviously safety concerns and you can always do a quick check to see if an item has been recalled for any reason. And even if it has, even if you've purchased an item secondhand, if there is say a change to a safety feature where they can send you for example, if you had one of the old IKEA high chairs, IKEA will still provide you with that safety belt that they added later on, absolutely free if you just contact them. So just making sure that these items are in good shape and are nice and safe and there is no product recall or you contact the manufacturer if there is, is a great way of saving money and getting those things you need for a fraction of the cost. My fifth and final tip is probably my favorite and that is think about multi-use items. Now, as much as I wish it wasn't so, our babies are only little for such a short period of time. Hence why I think all the cuddling should happen. And so if you can think of some items that are multi-use that are gonna either grow with your baby or that can be repurposed after they're out of that newborn baby stage, that is a great way of utilizing that furniture or items in a different way. So for for example, instead of buying a dedicated baby change table, you could buy a nice low line drawer set and just put a change mat on top, or you can do away with that. I actually didn't have any change tables when I had my babies. I just had a change mat and a little kit that I could carry anywhere in my house and I could change them on the floor, on a bed, wherever we were, and I'd have everything I need in one place. But buying those items where you can you know, use that as a set of drawers or a dresser after your baby has grown out of needing to be changed. That's a great way of using a multi-purpose item. Other things are toys that grow with your baby. I can't tell you the amount of toys that are in my house that aren't actually designed to be toys that my kids and my babies have loved. My personal favorites are stacking cups. So they are really good from really little and my kids who are four and up now still use those. Things that can grow with them, things that are open-ended play are always my go-tos. And if you're purchasing them secondhand, we can all allow that ebb and flow that as your babies grow and change, you can resell those items and switch them out for items that they're growing into. So guys, I hope that this has been helpful for you if you are expecting a baby or someone you know and love is. If you have any questions for me, I would love to chat with you down in those comments where we can talk all things baby.